while the keyboard plays all the glory be to the Lamb of God and to him alone be all blessings and honor and power and wisdom and riches and glory and honor forever just lift your hands to him and be still in his presence Just reverence him in that still atmosphere. I see a number of people right now that the Lord is visiting. I see a fresh dew of the Spirit coming upon you. You've been in a dry place. Spiritually, you've been in a dry place. But right now, the dew of heaven is falling on you where you are. Just lift your hands and receive His touch right now. Father, bring them out of that dry place into a place of abundance, into the place of your rain, into the place of your dew. Let the dew of heaven bring a refreshing upon them. Touch them, Lord, mightily by your hand. Right now, it's coming on you. Just lift your hands. It's coming on you right now. season of dryness says the spirit of the Lord is over and he's bringing you to a broad place he's bringing you to a place where you will be drenched with his presence he's bringing you to a place of rich experience of his glory just lift your hands and receive it 
Oh Lord, let that glory move across this place from the front to the back, from the left to the right. Touch the one listening at home. Touch the one driving and listening, following this meeting right now. Let them feel it in their bodies and even in their soul. That wave of your glory, that visitation from heaven. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy. Worthy. You are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, we were. Wave your hands and give him praise. Bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy to receive our praise, our worship from the fruit, from the depth of our hearts, from the depth of our being. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul The dew of heaven is falling on you right now. touch you tonight this is your service this is the moment where it is you and God this is a personal moment this is the point of the service where you personalize it by your faith if you believe that God will touch you today that there is a word for you that will shift you to your next place I'd like you in the next two minutes to open your mouth and say Lord send the word afresh to me send the word to my life that will bring transformation that will bring healing that will bring deliverance come on be desperate in your prayers desperation has a sound desperation has a sound the word that brings my lifting the word that opens me to a new season come on talk to him come on lift your voice How great are How great You're my king The 
and core of my life power belongs to just pray for 60 more seconds be intentional in your prayer You're my king, the anchor of Save our belongs to you One more time, sing Father, I pray that you visit your children. You are the one who has gathered them. It's not me. I pray that you give them a word that will turn their lives around. I thank you for the supply of the Spirit. And I thank you because no one will leave this place in regret. Thank you for the next level that they are shifting into. Thank you for the new dimensions opened up to us because we came today let your name be highly exalted in jesus name what did you say Amen. clap your hands give god praise amen hallelujah i'm excited please be seated god bless you i'm excited I'm excited to be in this service today. I bless the Lord for what He's going to do in our lives. Once again, we thank the Lord for all the testimonies that are shared week after week on this platform. Especially, I'm grateful to God because these things are not the workings of men. These are the deeds of a mighty God. We give all the glory to His name forever and ever in jesus name amen are you happy to be here can we go into the word today how many of you are excited every time the word of god comes if you have been in this place for a while you will learn to treasure the ministry of the word there's absolutely nothing god can do outside of his word <laughs> even if it's a prophecy that comes to you it's still the word are you hearing me now the bible says that we have a more sure word of prophecy which is the scriptures the living word of god the bread that came down from heaven that you will eat in this service and be satisfied and be positioned for a new season of glory the bible says they go for strength to strength each one that appears before god in zion and after this service you are stepping into another dimension of glory you will shine like the brightness of the firmament i can't hear you yeah. in the name of jesus yeah. all right since we have by the way god bless you worship team can we celebrate god for them thank you amen that was an awesome one well since we have a very prayerful I'm very spiritually inclined congregation that have tapped into my message before coming let's just continue from there so we can uh, maximize time and close you must have heard all through the service I am I am I am I am again so that's what I came to share tonight the mystery amen <laughs> are you excited amen the mystery of the I am. Amen. Well, if you don't know how to shout on earth, I wonder what, how, what's your use in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see? <laughs> 
Come on, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Shout with the voice of triumph. Come on, somebody. Hey, give him glory. Ay, 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 ay. Amen. All right, be seated. Amen. You know, the Bible says God is gone up with a shout. Psalms 47 verse 5. Listen to me. Listen to me. There is only one thing that makes God stand up from his throne. And if you know God well enough, God is so powerful and is so wise in the way his throne was designed that God does not need to get up from his throne. The throne of God has wheels. Are you hearing me? And the way the throne was made, it's, it, well, you know, this is not the service for that, but you can just listen. The throne of God is, is designed in such a way that it can move northward, southward, eastward, and westward at the same time. So if you pray and you need God to move in your situation, God either sends angels or the throne of God is shifted in your favor. But the only time God stands up from his throne, in as much as he's the king of kings and lord of lords, is when praise is offered from the earth. Psalms 22 verse 3 says, For you, O Lord, inhabit the praise. You know what it means to inhabit? You pay for a house and you don't leave the house empty. You go there and do what? Occupy. Right? So every time praises go up, God comes down himself. Not just blessings, God himself. Because in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures. That's the reason why the coming down of God to inhabit your praise is what brings byproducts such as blessings. Did you hear what I said? Good. So whenever you see them shouting like that, don't look at them crazy because some of you, I don't know what you are going to do in heaven. I don't know the use. I don't know if there's a silent place in heaven, but I don't think there's any quiet place in heaven. There's sound going on in heaven, day and night. The Bible says day and night, they cry before the throne. The throne of God is full of noise. noise. You understand? Not just any kind of noise, but a joyful noise that gives him worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody give God a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. <laughs> Please be seated. All right, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Amen. God is going to do something in your lives this afternoon. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says praise is comely of the righteous. So every time we come in the presence of God, we must be praise addictive. You understand what I said? When it's time to shout, you shout. When it's time to clap, you clap. And when it's time to listen, you listen for the word that is coming which has been provoked by reason of your shout and your praise to him and i'm excited because god will change somebody's lives today someone's life is about to change just pray in the spirit for 30 seconds someone's life is about to hit a dimension of revelation from god from the word of god that will reposition you Arise, shine, for your light has come. Your light is coming today. Harabashita ramagem radicos cabrande, se prende colibri hataga, robo coscolo brodoco brodoshama. Oh, be lifted above all the gods. We lay our ground and worship you. Oh, believe. 
fair above a lot of God be they our crown and worth oh glorious God say we praise your name And worship you. Oh, glorious God, say, we praise your name. We lay your ground and a house of worship. Oh, we lay, we lay, we believe that above all other God. We lay, we lay, we worship Oh, God, God, say. Just express your worship to him, his Lord, anytime he can interrupt our service, his Lord and King. And when he comes, we respond in worship. I see fresh oil coming on a couple of persons right now. Inside, outside, online, I see fresh oil. I see fresh oil, burning oil. That's the grace for the next season. Fresh oil, new wine by the Spirit of the Lord is coming to you. Amongst the gods who is like thee, you are glory and holiness, fearful in praising. Lord, we thank you for your presence in our midst. Lord, we thank you. We know when you come in our midst, we reverence you. We adore you. We bless you. Mm. Thank you for a visitation. Thank you for a fresh infilling. Thank you for a fresh baptism. 
thank you for cloven tongues of fire that is resting on your children. Thank you for the rain of your spirit. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Paragasi Balarada. Oh, we thank you. Padaragoshi Adana. Come on, just be hungry for his touch. Nikoria Mashabrata, Nengrosi Prade, Peresodoki Meliriaso. Drink from that fountain, drink from that new wine, the wine of the Spirit. Drink from it right now. Without my heart, without my heart, I worship you. Without my heart, without my heart, when I give you praise, without my heart, without my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we receive of your presence, we receive of your grace that is available tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Could you just be seated if you can? For some of you, this is the part of the service that, is, that you are interested in. For some of you, your service is already over at this point. Lord, we thank you. Mm. I see a release of the prophetic spirit on a few individuals here. I see a release of the prophetic spirit. God says you are going to begin to operate on another level, another level, another level, another level of revelations, of visions. You have been inducted to a higher class. You have been inducted to a high place. And so from now, step into that operation, step into that grace, let the Lord cause to manifest in your life the access to higher visions. Classified revelations of the Spirit be open to you. May you journey into the depths of God, into the belly of God. May you see things that the mortal eyes cannot behold. May you hear words that the ears of man cannot, be, cannot listen to. You have been inducted to a higher place. Sharabahasi Parakata. With all my heart. Oh, I, I give you praise. We don't my heart. We don't my heart. Bara bashita bara hazi this is pneumatic 
these, these are the technologies of the spirit. This is how God transforms men. This is how men are changed. It is by the workings of the spirit. It's not by the effort of man. It is by the workings of the spirit. And I worship you with all my heart, with all my heart. I want to prophesy on some people. Listen, Shh. just listen. First Samuel nine nineteen. I want to release the grace on some people now, but I want you to see this scripture. First Samuel 9, 19. First Samuel chapter 9, verse 19. Just listen to this. I want to prophesy and release the grace on some people. But listen to this. Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Ah. There's a seer anointing resting on at least four to five people right now at least four to five people right now that's see our grace the eyes of god that goes to and through the earth becomes your portion right now therefore let your eyes be open to begin to see classified things of the spirit classified informations virgin dimensions of the spirit that are not yet seen take that grace now take that grace take that grace take that grace now take help this young man with all my heart what a service of his glory listen let me prophesy on some people listen to this just listen and someone said answered and answered saul and said i am the seer Go up before me to the high place. Go up before me to the high place. For you shall eat with me today. I want to release a grace. Are you listening to me? I want to release a grace to you. Listen. I just heard this scripture while I was just here worshipping. It said, go up before me to the high place. For you will eat with me. There are some people here that will go up to a high place in the spirit. This service. And you begin to feast with the Lord in higher dimensions. Lift your hands. Father, whoever they are right now, the anointing that positions men into high places of the spirit. High places where you eat the bread of angels. Where you eat the bread of heaven indeed. High places where you begin to see and to participate in the glory that excels. Receive that grace right now, all across this hall, all across this hall, from the front to the back, outside, online. You are going up to a higher place. You are going up to a higher place now. You are going up to that high place now. Father, we thank you. Woo. What an anointing this afternoon. Shara Marana Nagada Dadi Samayada. Ura Mash, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Shabakoria Sibra. Come and quench this thirst of my soul. For somebody, this is the answer to your prayer. Bread of heaven, fill me till I were no more. Is 
my cup Fill the Lord And make me home Wine of heaven Fill me till I want No more Here's my cup Fill it Lord And make me whole The Lord said he's right He's rewriting the story Of the destiny of a family in this place right now He says he's rewriting your history He's rewriting your history and today marks the end of an era and the beginning of a new season a beginning of a new season for your family a season of abundance a season of release a season of favor of testimonies a season of good news feel me till i want no more here's my cup Feel it, Lord, and make me. Wave your hands and give him praise. Just wave your hands. Honor the presence of the Lord in this place. We honor and reverence you, Lord. Thank you. Please be seated. The mystery of the I am. Now that's a good way by which the I am introduces himself. When God introduces himself, <laughs> he steals the attention of everything and everyone around the vicinity of that encounter. Because his presence is power and life indeed. The mystery of the I am. A few years ago, the Lord gave me the I am confession. It was revealed by the Lord to me. And God has intended that that will be one of the one of the Uh, one of the things that will forge our ideology, our belief system as a movement, as a ministry, is captured in that I am confession. And we bless the Lord because year after year you keep hearing testimonies of people who have encountered the power, the grace, the wisdom, the splendors of God at work in their life because they believed and because they professed that confession the bible says in first timothy chapter 6 verse 12 we say fight the good fight of faith by laying hold of eternal life which you have professed so the fight of faith is the insistence in the confession of the word of god that has been revealed to you I think in the book of Psalms 108 or 100 and 107 verse 2 it says let the redeemed of the Lord say so verse 1 or verse 2 it says let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy so tonight I'm not really going to teach about the I am confession but I want us to really explore the mystery of that word, I am. We come here because we want to know God and we want to grow in the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is embodied in the person of Jesus Christ. So as we grow in the knowledge of Him, we are transformed to become like Him. So tonight it is my privilege and joy to bring to us this wonderful exposition, this wonderful revelation of who the I am really is and I believe that after today you will find the I am at work and at home in your life the mystery of the I am Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 to 17 and verse 18 
the mystery of the I am. I will try to be as fast as possible so we can pray. Tonight you are going to prophesy over your life. We are going to have time to pray, but you are going to use your words or the words of the scripture that you have to prophesy and redesign your destiny. Many of us, what will move us from where we are to where God wants us to be is your own confession. A lot of believers love God so much, but their confession has become the depravity of their current state. It is time for us by the power of prophecy to move to where God wants us to be. Colossians 1, 15 to 17. So get ready. It says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Amen. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven, and that on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. My emphasis is in verse 17. Of course, this scripture is describing who the Lord Jesus is. This is a revelation that Paul the Apostle received about the person of Jesus Christ. And he is before all things. And in him all things consist. Do you have another translation for better understanding? Maybe amplified new living translation. And he himself existed before all things. And in him all things consist. Cohere. Are held together. In other words, the definition of all things. The existence of all things is through him. When the Bible says in him all things consist, it means everything that exists on this earth, whether they are visible or invisible, animals or humans, plants, whatever that was created is existing as a fraction of him. He is the source, he is the life source of all things. Why did God make Jesus the source of all life? Why did God make him the model of everything that was created? Verse 18 of this scripture. The Bible says, he is also give us in New King James, please. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence, the preeminence, the preeminence, the preeminence. In other words, he will bring definition to everything that will exist in this life. In other words, your life, the definition of your life, is found in the I am in the Lord God himself everything that is created that is the reason why purpose is discovered it is not formulated it is not you don't create it you don't form it you discover it purpose is the discovery of the revelation of the created as contained in the creator what did I just say write it down You hear what I said? If you didn't hear it, listen to the message after now. So, when the created or the creation discovers the template of his or her or its existence in the one that created him or her or it, that's what we call the discovery of purpose. The Bible says that in all things he may have the preeminence so all things consist in him in john chapter 1 still speaking about or giving us the revelation of of the i am the word the lord god himself in verse 3 and verse 4 the bible says all things were made by him and without him, nothing was made that was made. In other words, nothing can exist that is not made by him. Whether it is artificial intelligence, whether it is robotics, any kind of advancement that is happening in the technological world today, everything is still a subset of the I am. What a mighty God we serve. Any field of learning that was discovered by man, was not created it was discovered by mind are you hearing me every field of learning in this life was discovered 
so according to the discovery from one dispensation after another there is a development of knowledge there is an increase of knowledge all right so this person discovered something in mathematics and he formed a theorem from it and called it pythagoras theorem created a formula and then in another dispensation someone discovered something else he discovered another possibility in mathematics and created a niche around it gave it his or her name because that's what inventors do so that they can be remembered in history but you know they know that everything that they invented they discovered they did not create they only help to modify because god like told you last week that god when god made man in his image and his likeness the likeness there means god made man to function like him and god is creator so god made man another creator no wonder the bible says after the creation of man that god rested on the seventh day the next day he rested because another creator was created are we together here so verse 4 now in him was life and the life was the light of men let me define life and light here the life because this is jesus being revealed as the eternal word the eternal word of god the life here that was in him is what we call resurrection remember on easter sunday i was sharing with you how that one of the things of, that the devil one of the revelations that the devil never caught or understood when he was with god was the revelation of resurrection in other words a life that is without end a life that defeats death that defies death that is resurrection is a living reality that defies the the tendency to die or to deplete so in him was life in him was resurrection and that resurrection became the hope that's what you call light there became the hope of mankind you know every knowledge that is discovered is for the development of mankind isn't it good so when i'm talking about hope knowledge you should relate what i'm talking about in him was life and that life became the light when you are in a dark place for a long time there are all kinds of limitations because of the darkness but when light comes hope has been restored isn't it when light comes it means you can see the next person close to you it means you can have conversations it's like life comes alive in that place people can you know things can happen there can be activity because there is light there in him was life and the life was the light of man verse 22 and verse 23 then they said to him this is john the baptist now after the revelation of christ the word as the one through whom all things were made the one who has brought life that has become a light to men the pharisees came to john the baptist and they asked the question they said who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us what do you say about yourself do you know that a time comes where your generation will ask you this question who are you ask your neighbor who are you i know the person answered you by telling you his or her name ask the person again who are you you know when the demon was speaking to the seven sons of Skiva. I hope you know that the demon knew their names. The demon had revelatory capacity. That was why he knew the name of Jesus and the name of Paul. So when the demon was asking who are you, he was not asking for their names. He was asking for their identity. What can you say about the revelation of yourself? What can you say about the life that is at work in you? What do you bring to the table? Who are you? life will always ask you that question it is your re your relationship with god your intimacy with god that helps you to grow in the knowledge of jesus christ who is the image of god and transforms you in that knowledge to become like you that empowers you it is that experience that empowers you 
to answer that question so when god sends a man to a generation either as a minister in the church place or in the marketplace whatever assignment god god you know bestows on a man in that assignment is a clear revelation of who that individual is it's a manifestation of who you were created to be this is what john said he said i am the voice of one john understood that his definition as a man came by reason of the revelation he had of his source which was the word of god that was why he started defining who he was by first mentioning the name of where he came from he said i am the voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the lord as the prophet isaiah said in other words the reason why i'm doing what i'm doing is because i was created by someone remember in the i am confession say i was created to show forth his praise the praise there is not clap your hands and sing song the praise there is the virtues the characteristic feature the glory of god the nature of god all that god has and all that god is i was created to show forth his praise first peter chapter 2 verse 9 says you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a peculiar people that has been called out of darkness into his marvelous light in another place here, to show forth the praises of him i think in the same verses who are uh, the same verse rather who has called you out of darkness unto his marvelous light so the revelation of your identity as an individual comes from the understanding that you have of the revelation of the god who created you and who you serve and revelation is a product of relationship i hope you know you cannot know god if you don't have a relationship with him you see too many words that is that are used to define a particular if someone uses too many words to define himself sometimes it connotes confusion or it connotes that the person doesn't know who he or she is when the person knows who he or she is he doesn't need too many words to define who he was who he is or who, who she is john said i am the voice my existence is through him i was created in him therefore my manifestation will be from him i am an offshoot of this reality this wonder that is unsolvable by for, for many generations this this mystery this wonder that exists from eternity's past into eternity and eternity the one who created and defined all things yet is without definition i am an offshoot of him exodus chapter 3 god decided to reveal himself to moses every time god will raise a man and use him to implement his will his counsel his purposes in a generation he must first of all appear to that man there is a there is an encounter experience that is occasioned around the life of that man god cannot send a man who has not had an encounter with him because it is in an encounter that you have the experience of knowing who god is and so god decided to reveal himself to moses the reason why revelation is needed the reason why we need a revelation of god in our time is because your confidence in representing god and his kingdom is tied to the revelation you have about him it's tied to your revelation of him god revealed himself to moses exodus 3 verse 14 moses asked god in verse 13 he said who will i say send me what name will i give the children of israel have been in egypt they knew how you appeared to their father abraham to their father excuse me to their father isaac to their father jacob they heard of those stories now they are in egypt 
they see the witchcraft and the satanic orchestrations in Egypt. They see all kinds of religions in Egypt. They know that Egypt has about a thousand gods. Each of these gods are not without a name. The God of this for that. The God of this for that. Which name will I give to them? In other words, Moses was trying to liken God to be one of those gods. Okay, you have gotten another revelation of another God we don't know. God said, no, you can't liken me to those gods. In verse 14, what did he say to him? He said, I am who I am. King James, please. He said, I am that I am. I am that I am. In other words, I will be what I will be. In other words, God is saying, if I give you a name for myself, I've limited myself. So I'll allow you to call me according to how I appear to you part time. If I come as healer, you can call me healer. If I come as provider, you can call me provider. But to give you a name, because a name captures the full definition of an individual, of an entity. But this me, I don't know whether I'm an entity. What, what do you say about the God that created all the galaxies? 500 billion galaxies i told you each of these galaxies contains 200 billion solar systems we are living in one of the solar systems one what will you call that kind of god you know good research sometimes help you uh, appreciate the god that you serve that's the reason why every time you cry out of of emotion and out of despair and out of unbelief god doesn't answer is that true? Have you been there before? He appeared to Gideon. He said, Thou mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. Gideon said, If God is with us, what has happened to all the stories we heard? Why are we suffering like this? Did God answer him? No. God said, I'm sending you in your... He said, Go in this that might and deliver Israel. It's as if God avoids... God, in his dealings with man, God is void of emotion but full of compassion. God... This, he doesn't feel your emotions. Let me just help somebody. That doesn't mean he's callous, he's cold-hearted and he's wicked. No, he's love personified. It's just that to you, love, you thought love was emotion. <laughs> emotion is only a failed attempt to reveal love. If love was emotion, then love is not true and should not be trusted. Because emotions are, are variables. They change. They are not the same. Tomorrow you feel good about the young man. Next tomorrow you don't want to see him. If love was like that, will you trust in love? Even among husbands and wives, there are sometimes you don't want to see the woman. Self. You are just avoiding her. You don't want to see her. There are some other times, my God. If you don't get a, a what they call... What do you do when he comes back from work? That greeting, that greeting like a kiss. What do you call it? It's only married people that will know it. If you are single, just keep serving the Lord. If you are having a nice time in this place, say amen. amen. If you are single, just keep You don't understand. When the Bible says, greet your brother with a holy kiss. Eh? As a single person, just wave at the person like this. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But when you, mar when you get married, you will understand. You know, romance. Amen. I don't know what's your problem. Allow me to. Allow me. You have started again. Allow me. <laughs> Amen. The I am. I am that I am. It will interest you to know. That the word I am appears 719 times in scripture. In the Old Testament it appears 508 times. In the New Testament it appears 211. You would not have a word appear this much. If there was no emphasis of revelation on it. In the New Testament Jesus uses the word I am seven times. He said I am the bread of life. In John chapter 6 verse 35 and in verse 48. He said, I am the door in John chapter 10. By me, if any man enters, 
He said, I am the good shepherd. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. What else did he say? Huh? I am the way, the truth, and the life. How many now? There's one more. Let me see how, how much you study your Bible. Eh? What's the last one? <laughs> Amen. So you see all the ayams that Jesus used. Remember that Jesus, in fact, in John chapter 10 verse 30, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Jesus is the express image of the person of God. All right? The manif God manifested is Jesus. That is the reason why he kept using the word I am in order to define who he was. The word I am that I am in Hebrew is Eya Asha Eya. Now Eya, if I had if I could spell it for you, is um, is another way of writing the word Yahweh. In fact, in the Hebrew, Yahweh is the third person noun of Eya. So Eya is the name of God. I don't have time, I would have shown you in scripture places where that word was used. So when you say Eya, it's the same as you saying Yahweh. It's just like, you know, calling him. This is Bishop now, you call him Victor, that's his name, isn't it? And when you want to address him, there's a pronoun you use to address him. You say he, isn't it? So that's how it is. So Eya is also another way by which you write the word Yahweh. And Yahweh is the most glorified name of God amongst the hebrew people and the reason why we are going into hebrew is not because it's a hebrew class but it's because god revealed himself to the hebrew nation so if we understand the templates of the experiences that god had with that nation we will come into a fullness of the knowledge of god are we here Eya asha Eya. what it means is i am that i am or i will be what i will be in other words just call on me and i will appear to you according to what you want but if i should appear in my fullness it cannot be contained humanly that's the reason why the bible says in john chapter 1 verse 18 it says no man had seen god before now at any time it said but the only begotten son of the father the one who is in the bosom of the father has declared him that means even moses did not see god what he saw was an angel That's it. It's written there, Exodus chapter 3. The Bible says, God appeared to him. How? A burning bush. An angel appeared. Psalms 104 verse 4. He makes his angel spirit and his ministers flame of fire. That's why the bush was burning. That fire, there was an angel. But in the fullness of time, the mystery of godliness, according to 1 Timothy chapter 3, God appeared in form of a man. And all of God was captured in the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, in verse 9, that he, in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That was why every time Jesus defined who he was to people, he would say, I am this. Because he was the I am manifesting in flesh as the same I am that existed in eternity. Now, why are we talking about I am, I am? Why I want to, what I want to point out here before we pray is that God is the source for the existence of all life. That is why if a man would define himself or if a man would give an answer to explain who he is, he will often say, I am this or I am that. If you ask somebody, what's your name? You say, I am Jonathan. Isn't it? What, what do you do? Or what's your profession? I am a carpenter or a bricklayer or a trader or an ICT expert. It will always be, I am. The reason is because God is the definition of all things. So it is not possible for you, a human being, to give an answer of the definition of who you are, isolated from the name of God. 
That's why you will always say, you thought it was English language. I came to tell you that it's a revelation that has been captured and hidden in time past. It is called I Am. Now the reason why the name I Am is powerful. One of the reasons is because when you call God I Am, you are not talking about a God that existed in the past. You are not talking about a God that will exist in the future. You are bringing the revelation of a God that exists even now and is there with you. One of his names is called Jehovah Shammah. Sham, Sham, A-M, Shammah. It means the Lord is there. When you call him I am, you are, you are conjuring it. You, I can't use the word conjure because you know God, God is not a servant spirit. You can't conjure him. No matter how you speak in tongues, you don't conjure God. You are conjuring the power that he has placed inside of you already. If God could be conjured, it means he could be summoned. You can't summon God. He's the king spirit. He's the father of spirit. You, a spirit, then you are summoning the source. No, it's not possible. When you have this understanding and you know that he's living inside of you, why are you threatened when somebody tells you that they took your name to a malam? Which malam? Call the malam for me. Line them up. I will seize their network. They won't prophesy. They won't see anything. And when they have tried and failed, I'll prophesy to all of them. Why? Because I am has sent me. That spirit they are serving is serving another spirit that is serving another spirit that is serving another spirit that is serving satan who is a creation of god i am sent me jesus asked Martha. jesus told Martha, i say your brother will live again Martha became a theologian she decided to lecture jesus he said i know my brother will live again on the resurrection money well that was a good revelation she had but that was past tense that's why you it's i am you call when you are in a situation jesus says is it me they are calling a resurrection morning that morning is here with you that day that event is personified before you he say i am the resurrection and the life he that believes in me though he were dead so it's possible to believe in him and choose death it's possible to believe in him but still allow the sickness to kill you he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he will live again. But he that believes in me and decide that I can't have this revelation of the I am and still die. No, I'm holding it to go back into life. He said he shall not die again. That's the reason why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, behold, I tell you a mystery. Verse 51, we shall not all sleep. Not all of us will die. He said, but we shall all be changed some people have captured the revelation of i am as the resurrection and the life that is at work in them and that revelation will keep them no matter how old till jesus comes and they'll be waiting for him when he returns to be transformed and translated to be where he is i am the mystery of the i am that's the reason why your confession you you become at this point you now become intentional about your confession you realize that your confession is not just about you but it's about the possibilities that can now play in your life and you know that he's called i am and your definition is from him your existence is in him in him you live you move and you have your being that's the reason why you cannot at this point say i am sick no. the bible says in isaiah 33 none of the inhabitants of zion shall say i am sick right 33 the last verse none of them shall say in zion i am sick king james translation please give us that scripture let's see so that you can see it for yourself he said, and the inhabitants will not say, I am sick. You know why? Because <laughs> every confession you make about yourself is no longer about you. God is now involved. The revelation of God is, 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 is captured there. So how will you say, I am sick, when I am is life? 
and is living inside of you. Why will you say, I am poor? You know, the psalmist, he thought he knew God. And there's a psalm, I, 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 can't, I can't place my hand on the very scripture now. But the psalmist, he said, I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks kindly of me. That's a pitiable, you know, a, a, a pitiable confession. So that it will look like God is sympathizing with his condition. That's Old Testament revelation. But the Bible says that you know the grace of our Lord Jesus. That though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So that through his poverty you will become rich. But apostle, even if I say I am rich, I am still broke. It's because your riches are in glory. The confession is from a finished standpoint. You are declaring it from the place where it was finished. To where it is manifesting or will manifest. Even, even science taught us that diffusion is the movement of molecules from a higher concentration to a lower not the other way around you confess it from where it was already concluded i thought i i went to preach somewhere this morning i told them i said we do not rejoice because all is well we rejoice till all is well Look at the lady go and testify that you did not get admission and the same week before coming to testify she got the admission that's the signature of i am he's trying to say i can make it happen even now even now even now even now even now so when you say i am blessed I am prosperous. I am blessed to be a blessing. I am great. I am successful. It, it shifts you from a Christianity that makes you seek after God for things to a Christianity that sees that the things have already been freely given by God. So you are no longer serving God because of what you will get, even though there, those benefits hang. But you are now serving God because you have a revelation of all that he has made available for you in Christ Jesus. So your service to God will always proceed from a place of thanksgiving and joy. You say thank you when you have been given. You say thank you when it has been done. That's the reason why Jesus taught us that the first thing that happens when you pray is thanksgiving. When he went to Lazarus' grave, what was the first thing he said? Father, I thank you. Is that what you say when you want to raise a dead person? You charge yourself for four hours first now. You charge yourself. It's good to charge yourself, but there are situations that will not allow you to charge. Before you say, cha. You are in a plane that is about to crash land. We charge, you want charge there. Release a word. Because that's what I am would do if he was there. Brothers and sisters, this revelation of the I am, not just as the fullness of God, but also the God in which we have our definition and our existence. This revelation is the secret to our dominion. So when we say this is the year of dominion, remember that it will be based on your confession. And he has given you that blank check. I am that I am. I will be what I will be to you. And now that you have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son, you have the spirit of adoption in him. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 17, it says here in his love perfected, that in the day of judgment will have boldness. It says for as he is, so are we. I thank God that the Bible didn't say as he is in heaven. No, it says as he is, so are we. As he is, so are we. That means every time you read the Bible, anything you see God say he is, that's who you are. If he says, I am the door, you are the door. If he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, you are also a way maker. After all, somebody met you, somebody met his life partner through you. Nobody so. Were you not a way maker in that instance? 
Somebody got a job through your recommendation. Were you not a way maker? Okay. My question is who parted the Red Sea? As it is written, who parted the Red Sea? Do you realize that if Moses had not stretched out his rod, God wouldn't have act, acted. The sea would have remained the way it was. God said, but stretch forth your rod. And the Bible says when he did, God caused an east wind to drive the waters. The same way when he stretched his rod again at the other side, the waters came back. To further sponsor the revelation of I am into the Israelites so that they walk with that consciousness. When it was time to cross Jordan, it was no longer rod again. God said, tell the priest to step into the water. And the Bible says when they stepped into river Jordan, the waters were parted. The Bible says the water stopped at the uphill and it was dry land. At the Red Sea, it was a rod. But this time around, it was a man inside. The next time you will see the water issue with Elijah, it was his mantle. These were men that began to walk in the consciousness of I am. That a man can become one with God. So when you say I am, anything you add to that statement is communicating a revelation of God at work with a man. It's, communication, it's communicating a revelation of God powerful through the representation of a man. The Bible says, and they went everywhere and preached the word. And the Lord was walking with them, confirming the word, the word with signs. When it was Elijah's stone, he removed his mantle and parted the water. When it was Jesus' stone, Jesus said, there's no need. If you do that, there'll be erosion. So he strode on the water to them. And when he was leaving, he said, he that believeth in me. The works that I do, he shall do. And greater works. Why are we not seeing greater works? It's because this mystery of the I am, this revelation is lacking. But God is restoring it in the body of Christ. The last day revival, which we are already at the brink of, is not going to be a man of God praying again for you. No. It's going to be sons, the manifestation of sons. Men and women who have arisen in the revelation and the knowledge of the God that is alive and at work in them. So when others see them, they see that God. As he is, so are we in this world. Did he raise the dead? Yes. That means you must raise the dead. Did he multiply bread to feed the poor? Yes, you must. That's why I say that the, he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To preach. Everything he is, you are. So anytime you read. Now this is, this is the basis for the I am confession. When God encountered me and gave me the I am confession. I looked at the scripture with this understanding and i realized that every time god made a statement about himself captured in that statement was my manifestation whether you believe it or not captured in that statement was my when he said i am the bread of life it means that i am also a is a channel of life now you don't need to eat me what you will eat are my words the bible says the tongue of the righteous promotes health the tongue of the righteous is a tree of life proverbs and he that winneth a soul is wise that's the that's the revelation i captured before we started this ministry and that's what i walk in so i don't go to a place and charge the place up no i just look in what is i am going to do if he was here and then i act it out if if they like let that place be as dull as possible but when i step there i am will show up because he is the I am. I am who he is. Therefore, I am. When my generation is looking for a healer, here he comes. When my generation is looking for a deliverer, he has been standing here, you didn't know all true. When my generation is looking for one that will bring the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, so that true words, men will come into the knowledge of God, he is right here. How does Jesus look like? Look at him here. Is it not written in your Bible? 
He said, now are we the sons of God. He said, though it does not yet appear what we shall be like. He said, but we shall be like him when we see him. For we shall be as he is. In other words, the way you are when you see God. As you keep getting transformed in the knowledge of God. When you see him, you discover that all the while you look like him. That means that this year we must be intentional about our confession. We must be intentional about what we say. And I'm speaking right now to all of us and generally to the body of Christ, especially those that are following online. Do you know, I discovered that many people, the reason why they are in the situations of life that they are in is because they were trapped by their own confession. How can somebody looking for prayer and deliverance, he keeps making confessions like, my own trouble, no, they finish. My own trouble, no, they end. Somebody said that to me before. He called for prayers and said that. He said, he said Apostle, you know, say my own trouble. I say, hey, stop there. As anointed as I am, that, that, that confession has created a barricade between me and that person. Look at how many times you have mentioned that I am nowhere. Look at how many times. Look at all the times you mentioned negative statements with I am. When you understand the reality of the I am, you begin to make deliberate because at that time your words now become the, 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 the pen by which or the instruments by which you shape and you carve out your existence. You can determine your own possibilities. You can determine your own path. You may come from a family that is that relegated to the background but with this understanding you can chart a new course for yourself you can come from a family that is cursed but you can decide that the course ended with them because i am has set me free he has brought me out of the power of darkness and into the kingdom of his dear son i am a king a royal priesthood i am a holy nation i am seated with him in heavenly places far above principalities and powers where is the cost coming from now it is without understanding that you can veto on any cause that existed it is without understanding that deliverance becomes easy it is without understanding that the yoke that the enemy seems to place around you which is tied to your initial ignorance is destroyed this night you are going to pray but in addition to your prayer, you are going to make deliberate statements. You are going to mutter. Some of us are too afraid in church. When they say prophesy over your life, you are too afraid. You are too shy. Your shyness is almost next to dumb. Forgive me for that. But it's the truth. Not knowing that this is not a church cliche. This is, the, this is how the prophetic happens in the life of a person. He said, by your words, you are justified. And by your words, you are condemned. He said, as I hear you say, Numbers 11, so I will do. What do you add to the I am? Every time you say, I am, what do you add to it? Do you see it as an opportunity to create new possibilities in your life? The Bible says, it is God who commanded light to shine in the darkness. He saw darkness, but he said, let there be light. You think you always confess what you see? No. You confess what you want to see until it becomes what you see. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 And God said Verse 5 And God said Like that different verses And God said When you look at verse 31 And God saw He kept saying it until he saw it I will never I will never I understand the power of words I will never I will never be ensnared by my own words. I will never. I will never. Jesus said the words I speak to you. They are spirit and life. And the Bible says as he is so are we. That means your words are also spirit. It depends on what you release. If you release negative confessions. You are releasing demons. Two years ago there was a drama that was acted here. You remember? Every time the lady was making wrong confessions. The demons were coming closer. Every time she made a, a, a right confession or a scriptural confession, the demons went, for, you know, went backwards and the angels came closer. 
You use your mouth to talk your way into your breakthrough. Talk your way into your testimony. Talk your way into your reality. Define your, in, your, 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 your reality as it is in heaven. I am rich. I will lend to nations. This afternoon I was to send money to somebody and I mistakenly typed 5 million. I just smiled. I say, very soon. Inside of me, I've seen myself giving. I've seen myself give 1 billion inside of me. Not as a HVC, just as an offering. Come and drop 1 billion and go. So it's just a matter of time. But I will keep confessing from there. When this I am confession came to me, I was in a one room. Oh. I was in a one room with four other boys who were there. It was from there I began making the confession till where I am today. And if he brought me to this point, I will continue. Somebody saying, Apostle, you need a car now. I've gone even beyond that one. Talking about cars that I will give. In fact, I'm already planning to buy a car for somebody this year. Yes. Because the Bible says you shall learn to many. You shall not borrow. My God shall supply all my riches, all my needs, according to his riches. So when your account is reading 0, 0.0, tune up to your heavenly accounts. You say, Apostle, but I've done it before. Keep doing it. Keep saying it until it happens. Keep saying it until you see it. There's a man called David Hogan. David Hogan. You can Google him up. David Hogan. I think he's from South America, thereabout. It, is, it, 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 it has been captured that they have raised up to a thousand dead people in his ministry. When he started the issue of raising the dead, many times he will pray for people, he will pray for the dead and they will not rise. In fact, if he prays for somebody who is very sick, they die. So he decided that, okay, since that's how it will be, I will keep praying unashamedly. And a time came when that became a reality. Sometimes when he comes to preach, he will say, this is what he will say of himself. He said, my name is David Hogan. I raise the dead for a living. Now you say it's pride. That's a man of confidence talking. That's a man full of faith. The Bible says, and Stephen, full of faith and of power. When you are full of faith, it will show in your confession. The righteousness of faith, the Bible says, he speaks. Faith is vocal. No faith, no words. Faith is vocal. Faith is vocal. Many, body to, many people told me that, you know, doing ministry in the north, ah, you will suffer. I said, okay. Maybe I'll be the first person to bring global attraction here. And then, your confession grows to a point where it becomes your manifestation. So that those who seem to be staying in other cities that are called greener pastures in court are surviving on you. Are receiving help from you. You that is in the desert. Because I don't need a greener pasture. Wherever I am, I am. Will make it the green pastures. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. Well, that's, his, that's him. David Hogan. You can go and browse about him. He said, I raised the dead for a living. 1,000 dead people raised up. Those kind of people, they will just empty the mortuary. They just go and... You know how many cemeteries we have here? They can enter anatomy lab and just... Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why? Because of the revelation of the Ayan. Another man called Seth Patrick, one of the saints of old, Go and Google his prayer, St. Patrick's prayer. He said, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ above me, Christ to win me, Christ in my words, Christ in my mouth, Christ in the ear of him that hears my words. What a, what a, what a bold and audacious prayer. Well, many of the feats that God achieved through St. Patrick's Man of mighty miracles. Because of St. Patrick, I don't know about now, but it is recorded to today in the nation called Ireland. Ireland. In Britain, there are no snakes. Because of St. Patrick. He was, he was walking in a village and he met a woman crying. Or her son was crying. Something like that, according to the story. What's the problem? He said, a snake beat him. Say, where is the snake? He said, he followed that way. 
He went and found the hole of the snake, brought the snake out and said, Snake, you are your kind. I banish you from Ireland. Till today, there are no snakes in Ireland. What has been banished from your village because of you? Rather, the kingdom of that, they are reviving. Their, their revival is going on. More shrines. They are now getting money to build more shrines. Those days, they used to build with temporal, from temporal structures. Now, the shrine is becoming permanent. But that somebody will wake up with that mystery of the I am. Beat your chest and say, I am. Everything he is, I am. One time, St. Patrick was taken to the village, a village. The king said they would not listen to the gospel. As a matter of fact, they wanted to kill him. And they learned that the son of the king was dead and long buried. He said, take me to the grave of, the, of your son. They took him there. He signed his signature on the grave and told them to dig the grave. They dug the grave and brought out the boy alive. He was buried six months before that time. They brought him out alive. A man like you, St. Patrick's. So these confessions that we mutter every day, keep saying it until it becomes part of you. Keep saying it until you don't laugh when you say it. Not laughter of mockery. You know when they say prophesy, you just see some people laughing and they are talking. That's his picture there, St. Patrick. Very audacious man. That time will fail me to give you the story of how he confronted a witch doctor. When they say prophesy over your life, you don't know that at that point, your words have become the vehicle by which you are transported from where you are to where God wants you to be. Do you know you can talk yourself out of your situation? In the book of Jonah, Jonah was swallowed by a fish that God prepared. Guess how Jonah came out? He talked himself out of the fish. Jonah chapter 2 verse 9, he said, And I will offer unto God the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will pay my vow. Next verse, the Bible says, And the Lord commanded the fish, and he vomited Jonah. He was in the belly of the fish. He didn't even talk about how he would die. He said, I will offer. He didn't confess where he was. He confessed what will happen. It means it doesn't matter how long I stay in this place. I will come out. I will offer. I will offer. When everything is shut down around your life, use your words to talk yourself into where God wants you to be. And the thing is, you don't need any effort. How do you attract... I'm, we're about to pray now. How do you attract the ministry of angels? I'm going to share with you briefly. Walking in abundance... Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. You know that song? I am walking in number. I like this. I am there. Speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. Let's sing it one more time. I am walking in abundance. Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. Listen, those days when God raised people to favor me at points of my life, those days then, then when I didn't know who I was, I called it luck. But now that I know who I am and I understand that favor is only a confession away, I confess it till favor becomes a permanent resident on my life. So when I see people helping me, when I see people doing things for me, inside I tell them thank you, but inside of me, I say, you were, you were commanded by favor to do it. Why? I saw a scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 24. He said, oh, Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full of the blessings of the Lord. And every day before I leave my house, I say to myself, I am satisfied with favor. I am full of the blessings of the Lord. I am, you know what it means to be satisfied with favor? In other words, multiple access. Access to resources, access to opportunity. Whether they say it has passed, because you are now interested, they will create another list for you. They say they have extended it. Why? Somebody who knows who he is. Someone who understands I am is involved. Multiple access. No door closes against me. 
no gate should be shut against me if the gate refuses to open the bible says it will break in pieces he said i will go before you and break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron because i am has sent me moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am favor i want you to prophesy to your life again walking in abundance moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am able. somebody that has experienced delay before now prophesy walking in abundance i am moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am able. come on sing it one more time i am walking in abundance moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am I don't know about you, but I am favored. I am. I am favored. Favor has an address. Check my house. I understand this mystery. Many of us are prayerful people, and that is good. You have trained yourself to develop the culture of praying in the spirit for long that is a good way to build your spirit man and invest in yourself that's very good you gather enough energy sometimes i do that all through the night but when i finish like that how do you spend that energy i begin to prophesy over my life i begin to call things i face the direction of the sun and i declare to it that as you rise you are rising with my blessing you are rising with my glory anything that was done by the devil as you shine over the earth the glory of god outshines the manipulations of darkness for the lord shall arise upon you and cause his glory to be seen on thee that's what i do every day intentionally i don't forget it i don't forget it at all i can never leave a prayer session without declaring over my life without it will not just happen no i know that my life is a pivotal for the blessing of god to flow through nations through generations i know that my life is an instrument of deliverance to families to communities i know that my words can open the gates of destinies so i know that the devil will do everything possible to fight my manifestations that's why day after day i keep that confession on he said fight the good fight of faith by laying hold of eternal life which you professed in other words keep saying it in hebrews he said cast not your confession your confidence away your confession he said for having been patient you will receive the promises can i tell you how angels operate in our lives and we'll pray some of you after this ah, angelic activities will be every day in your life every day every day moving with the speed of the holy ghost not speed according to men the speed of the holy ghost the speed that can take a man from the back side of the desert to become the prime minister the speed that can turn a man overnight the speed that can lift a man to outrun chariots that's the speed i move with yes i know that i'm in a, a dealing pro, a, a, a training process i know that god is dealing with me but the bible says after he has tried me i will come forth as gold if i give you gold what are you looking for again in other words everybody can go ahead of you and for now you don't have anything to present to your generation but hold on when you come out of this furnace of affliction you become like gold go everybody desires gold that's why it says in Isaiah 60, he says, I will make you an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. You know what that means? Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness. This is how angels walk and we are going to pray here. Psalms 103. Psalms 103, verse 20 and 21. 
Psalms 103. Look at this. Verse 20 and 21. 20 and 21. Bless ye the Lord. That's how he starts. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. I know when he said the voice of his word, you thought that the voice there was the voice of God. No. Can I tell you something? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and in Ephesians chapter 1 that we are his body. We are his body. Is there a mouth in your body? What comes out of that mouth? Voice. When the Bible says, giving heed to the voice, go back to that verse please. Giving heed to the voice of his word. It means that God has already said it. He has spoken it forever, O Lord. Your word is settled in heaven. But on earth, somebody needs to give voice to what God has said. Because confession is simply saying what God has said. And the Bible says angels excel in strength when they obey his word. When they give heed to the voice of his word. So angels will not move because you say, hey, angels, go and bring bread for me. No, they will move every time you open your mouth and make declarations that are scriptural. And make confessions that tally with the provisions that are in scripture. So if you are praying and your prayer is filled with scriptural declarations and confessions. For every time you release those confessions, angels are released. And by God, you need to know how, how many angels follow one believer. I was talking to somebody this week. I said that the number of angels were never recorded in scripture. Hebrews chapter 12 in verse 24, the Bible says they are innumerable. They are innumerable. But there was a time there was a service in heaven. That the number of angels that attended that service were captured. Only the angels that attended that service. There were other angels were in other places. Doing many things other galaxies but in this service in heaven this was the number the bible says in revelations chapter 5 verse 11 it says 10,000 times 10,000 if you are a mathematician calculate 10,000 times 10,000 it gives you 100 billion how many are we in this world projected population world population no more than 8 billion and the bible says 100 billion angels That's why I like that song that says, As you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. You know why? Because as he declares it, thousands upon thousands of angels, the Bible says they excel in strength by doing his word, giving heed to the voice of his word. Every time you speak, they are released. So you can speak and release thousands of angels to your village. You can be traveling to Abuja and you send the angels by reason of your confession, by reason of your scriptural declarations. And they, they move ahead as a protocol team to that city and orchestrate men. Somebody was supposed to travel to UK, but for some reason his flight is delayed. Why? Because he needed to be stationed in a place to favor you. You don't believe that? You get a breakthrough or God has shown you that you is taking you to the UK. Before you get to UK, create create what will happen to you in UK by your words. Begin to release destiny helpers and then the angels are going all across the nation of the United Kingdom appearing to people in their dream, giving them your name and your face. What do I do? When he comes, give him 10,000 pounds. Just like that, just like that. And you arrive one week later, somebody drives to your house and says, I saw your name and your face. I checked you on Facebook. And I saw that you came to the United Kingdom last week. Take 10,000. Why? I don't know. If you don't see those kind of miracles, then it means that the activity of angels around your life has passed. But from today, step into that realm. I said, step into that realm. I've seen things in my life that has made me afraid. Somebody gave me a seed in January, $50. She said that was her all. I held the seed. I looked at her. I said, from today, this will serve you. And you will not need to ask for this. It will come for you. Thank God it was dollars I was talking to, not Naira. One month later, according to her, somebody called her from Switzerland and said, I don't know, but I just made a covenant with God. To give you so 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 amount of dollars for as long as you are alive what kind of covenant is that is it blood covenant 
somebody she has never she has not spoken to in a long time he said i've made a covenant with god what if the person stays for 40 years so be it enter that place enter that place of strange and uncommon favor as i'm prophesying it to you again enter that place of strange and uncommon favor in the name of jesus i'm releasing that word over your life again the place where strangers will stand and feed your flock the place where strange men will stand to favor your cause to favor all that concerns you step into that place by grace in the name of jesus are you ready to pray by heeding the voice of his word next verse and then we'll pray quickly he said bless the lord all you his, his hosts you ministers of his who do his pleasure every time you speak the word of god you are you are pushing for the manifestation of angelic operations some of you have thousands of them following you that have been idle for a long time they are there but demons are dealing with you why your confession you brought yourself into this mess but the good news is you can fix it yourself he brought Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones. What did he say to him? Did he say lament? No. Did he say look for help? No. He said prophesy. From where you are, command that dead valley of dry bones to become a parade ground of a marching army. By words. By words. Do you know that the power of a prophet is in words? Nothing more. Some of you want the prophet to lay hands on you and push you to the ground. To pour oil to oil finish. If God doesn't tell me to release use oil, I don't use oil. My greatest power is in my words. In fact, I don't even need to say it. I can send it as a text message to you. Because there are angels carrying that word on their wings, it will navigate through the billions of waves in the telecommunication industry and look for your phone. And from your phone, enter your life and make you who the word says. You've heard testimonies here. Papa sent a text. Papa said I should say to so so person that by tomorrow she'll be well. Imagine that kind of a thing. And by the next day, the person is fine. Are you ready to pray? We are going to change the narrative around our life. We are going to change the definition around our life. Choose not to allow people define you by what they say about you. Many of us are too conscious about what people say. You, are, you give too much place to rumor and gossip. Can I tell you something? I don't believe in rumors. Oh. I don't care about rumor and gossip. As a matter of fact, I don't care what people say about me. In fact, if you think I care about rumors and gossip, you need to ask me the meaning of my son name. My son name means let them talk. That's what it means. You hear what I said? I don't care. Whatever you bring to me, people are saying, I don't care. What I care about is what I say about myself. They didn't ask John the Baptist, what are people saying about you? They say, what do you say of yourself? Who are you? Ask your neighbor, who are you? Ask your neighbor again, what do you say about yourself? God has made you an apostle. But because there is no manifestation yet in your life, and the people around you have ridiculed you by your word, by their words, now you don't even believe in yourself again. Can I tell you something? If you don't believe in yourself, you can't function as a minister. If you don't believe in the power that is at work inside of you, the anointing can never flow. Pray for 13 hours. Pray for 26 hours. If you don't value what you carry, and you will only value what you carry when you understand what you carry. So I respect people, I honor people, but I don't look down on myself. I allow people to see me only when I know that they have, they understand the value of what I carry. It's not about me, it's about I am. Well, the implication is that when I say I am, I'm talking about myself and I'm talking about him. He is the I am. I am who he is. Therefore, I am. So if I say I am to you, there are two people I'm talking about in one. God and me. Lift your voice and pray in the spirit for two minutes. Open your mouth and just speak in other tongues for two minutes. Come on, just raise your voice. Somebody that has been impregnated with faith. Somebody that is loaded with power by reason of what you have heard. Open your mouth. 
Speak in the language of the Spirit. There is a stirring on your inside. Power is being generated from inside you. There is a change that is about to happen around you. You are about to be lifted from where you are to where God has destined you to be. Come on, go ahead. Come on, go ahead. Come on, go ahead. Work in the miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. Working in miracles. I live a life of favor. For I know who I am. Shabarakata balagaragade, iko barakata la baragados. Eka baragasi abalada satoria, efereke baragos. Eka baragata la garagadesi akoya. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Do you know that even Jesus, the reason, one of the main reasons why Jesus died and was resurrected was because before his death, he kept confessing it, that the Son of Man would die and after three days will rise again. How? He did not know. He did not care. That's why he never explained it. He kept saying it. He kept saying it. Even the night when he was betrayed and, 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 and arrested, he told them, he said, because of me, all of you will be made to fall this night. He said, the son of man will be betrayed and arrested and killed. He said, but I will rise again and meet you in Galilee. Somebody is about to die. He's talking about resurrection. You create, your future is nothing more than what your words created today. Your future is nothing more than what your words created. God has said it in heaven, but a man must agree with him. A man must stand with him on earth. You must hold on to it. I don't care what they have said about my family. I don't care the causes that has existed in my family. But I decide to become different. I decide to change the narrative that by my words. Listen to me. When Moses was alive, it was him that God used to bring about all the miracles that Israel experienced. Moses was Joshua's master. Every time they needed the power of God to manifest, it was Moses. They will go to Moses. When Moses died, God told Joshua, He said, Be strong and courageous. It has fallen on you now. And Joshua went in that might. The only thing Moses transferred to Joshua was the spirit of wisdom. He didn't transfer the anointing. He didn't transfer the ability for signs and wonders. Joshua copied it from Moses. He saw that every time something will happen, Moses will say it. God told Moses, he said, speak to the rock and water will come out. Joshua said, copy and paste is good. And Joshua stood and spoke to the sun and the sun stood still. It was not written about Moses, but it was said of Joshua that never before or after that did God hear the voice of a man. Papa had gone. But he understood the formula. He understood the formula. There are people dying around you. There are people that are broke. Some of you say, I carry a prosperity anointing. It will manifest first from your words. Prosperity, prosperity anointing is not just what you have in your account. It's what your mouth can declare. Bishop Oedipo said one time, they told him that somebody read a magazine and said, you are worth $150 million. He said, that's an insult. He said, I'm worth Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply. You are crying that he has bought one private jet. Now he has how many? Continue. You are worth what your mouth can declare. I carry a prosperity anointing. There's a time when there will be no money in your account. That's when we know you are anointed. By your words, you will create the possibility. Then the people around you, your generation will know truly on this one, rest that spirit. 
He said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Nothing else but to preach, to speak. He said, to appoint unto them that mourn. To appoint. You know what it means to appoint? God planned that in 2023 he will bless them. But he didn't give them date. But a man that understands this mystery will come and give a date. He will program it on so-so day, in so-so month. And God will heed it. To appoint unto them that mourn. To appoint unto them that more. I want you in the next three minutes, two, three minutes, you are not going to pray. Don't speak in tongues. Well, you can do it interchangeably. But I want you to open your mouth and begin to make declarations that you know will translate and transform your life from where you are to where God wants you to be. Even if it's just one scripture you know, open your mouth and keep speaking it over your life in the next two, three minutes. Make sure you are so vocal that the angels and even the demons can hear you. If you want to walk around, you can walk around. Begin to proclaim. Make declarations over your life. The favor of God is at work in me. I am blessed to be a blessing. I am created to show forth His praise. The life of God is at work in me. The power of God is made manifest through my life. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the blessed of the Lord. I am His glorious riches. I am a display of His glorious riches. I receive access to revelation on living faith. I walk in prosperity till infinity. The path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. My light will never go dim. My light will keep shining from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. Come and open your mouth. Wherever you are, whether you're driving your car, whether you're in your house, whether you are listening to the group, get mad by the spirit of faith and begin to turn your valley of dry bones into a place of greatness. Open your mouth and prophesy. Open your mouth and declare. The grace of God is manifested in me. The glory of God is revealed in me. I walk in abundance. I am favored of the Lord. I am the blessed of the Lord. I am satisfied with favor. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hey! Hey! Shaya ya ya na ba karada da de na na na. Shabara da da la karia da de sada. The I am dwells in me. The I am lives inside of me. The I am is at work in me. No, no, man of God, you are not a failure. You are a success. Businessman, you are not a failure. You are not a temple. You will learn to nations. I never grow. Walk your way into your breakthrough. Walk your way out of your circumstances. Come on, you have chosen me. Your blood my Come and open your mouth. Talk your way out of where you are. Out of sorrow. 
In Jesus' name, lift your hands. Let me speak over your life. This is the time where destinies are changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an, on an eye, he said, We shall all be changed. That confirms the word of his servants and perfect the counsel of his messengers. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Every wrong atmosphere around your life, every walk of darkness around your life, that is a product of words that were spoken against you, either by yourself because of ignorance or by others around you out of spite, in the name of Jesus like a cloud, I command that atmosphere to be rolled away from your life. I shift that atmosphere away from your life. Every cause, every enchantment, every incantation, every work of sorcery, every work of divination spoken against you in the cover of darkness or in broad daylight that has brought limitations around your life, that has brought satanic manipulations around your life, I declare it abolished and annulled forever. I abolish it forever in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now, by the power of prophecy, I shift your life from lack to abundance, from sorrow to joy, from poverty to riches, from weakness to power from dryness to abundance from grass to grace from grace to grace from grace to glory and from glory to glory step into a new season now in the name of Jesus Christ I declare over your families right now I stand by the authority that is in the everlasting blood the blood of the everlasting covenant every ancestral or foundational cause that has prevailed over men in your family in your community where you come from wherever you are under the sound of my voice by the power that is in the blood of Jesus I command those causes to be rolled away I command those causes to be deleted Help you, just help them. I command those causes to be come to brought to an end. I declare that it is over forever. It is over forever. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you today. Every satanic portal that was opened over your life by reason of negative confessions by reason of satanic words spoken against you i close those portals forever i close those portals forever and i open over your life portals of heaven portals of glory portals of breakthrough portals of power portals of the manifestation of the holy ghost in the name of jesus 
From today, I call you the anointed of the Lord. I call you the blessed of the Lord. God has ordained you a prophet. I declare that you are a prophet to nations. God has ordained you a kingdom financier. I declare you will lend to nations. Your financial status changes tonight. By the power of prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. I place the word over your life. And I ask that the Lord release thousands of angels to bring to pass this word. Today is the 30th of April. Tomorrow begins a new month. I declare that before miracle service, you are coming with basket loads of testimonies. You are coming with basket loads of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands and give God the biggest, biggest praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Be exalted forever in Jesus' name. All standing everywhere, know Jesus, forget about all that we have said. You don't have Jesus in your life, this can never be a reality. You cannot be bold enough to say I am because you don't have the life of the I am in you. Why we all stand if you want to surrender your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life afresh. Wherever you are, lift your right hand to heaven. Quickly, I will pray for you. You say, Apostle, I need Jesus. I want the I am to dwell in my life, to reign in my life so that through his presence in my life, I can walk in dominion. I'm tired of all that I have gone through. It's time to say yes to Jesus. Raise your right hand to heaven. God bless you. I see that right hand. God bless you. God bless you. I see another hand. Lift your right hand up to heaven. It's a time to surrender to him. If your hand is lifted up, please run to the front quickly. Run to the front as you, as you are running to salvation. Today is your day. This is the acceptable time for you. It is time for the I am to be alive and at work. You can you celebrate them? Hallelujah. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is your night. Amen. Now I want you to stretch your hands towards them and begin to pray for them. By the authority that we have in the name of Jesus, break every curse, break every limitation around their life. Declare that they are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Those of you in front, I want you to place your right hand on your chest. Today is your day. Your life has experienced a dramatic change. The I am is coming to live inside of you. Just make this confession after me. Because the Bible says, by your confession salvation is made say after me lord jesus i come to you today thank you for saving me thank you for washing me clean by the blood that you shed i declare that today i am a child of god live inside of me and i proclaim that I will serve you all the days of my life in Jesus name help that lady quickly father I pray for this one I told you that every time you release confessions of faith spirits are activated Lord they have made this confession with faith in their mouth in their heart and with the words of their mouth I declare from today that their sins are forgiven I declare that they are born again that they are new creatures in Christ Jesus. The shame, the reproach, the attack, the oppression, the curse, the limitations of the past is rolled away from their life. The stronghold of Satan is broken off their life. I declare that you fill them with your spirit. Make them to serve you and walk with you all the days of their life. They will keep glowing from glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.